Okay, that's the dinner bell. Hold on. Let me make sure this is big enough. Yes, I'm using Zoom. But, um, I wanted to go ahead, it's converting right now, and talk about the propaganda that's kind of used against black men, white women relationships. And I say this because, again, the white men, black women relationships, they want the same victimization, the true victimization, that black men, white women relationships get. Like, anytime black men date out there, are immediately, immediately, turned into this ugly version of themselves like guys like me again can i be honest i would date out and i would date out because most black women most black women my skin color stuff like they don't appreciate it. and i don't mean like, oh they don't, they don't give me sex no there's no respect now if you want to get down to it because of how western and most modern women work if they don't want to have sex with you then they don't respect you and that's just the occam's razor that's just what's dealt but it, it's it's to a point where, in reality, I know if I was a part of any other community, I would be respected. And me being black, it shouldn't be holding me back, but it's holding me back because, you well, know, the same women within the same community don't respect me. And they don't have to, according to all the propaganda that's put out there. It's my fault for not being successful, not being a high earning man, this, that, any other. I deserve to be beat down because black women are not community builders or sustainers. They just go to the highest bidder. And their actions show that. Their actions show that. Like, this is what their actions are showing. So, I can only accept that. And I'm saying that not from a complaining point, but from a black people point that I have to accept how a lot of black women in the community function. But it's more or less because they can't accept it that I have to make moves on according to and be honest about it. But if dating out serves a better option for me, then I, I would do it. I would. And it's not that I would dislike black women. They're my sisters. We have the same skin color. I understand their struggles certain, to certain degrees, but let's be honest here, black women have an out. They are the ones who, if they date lighter or deal with lighter, then it's encouraged, and there's books about it. Whereas if it's a black man dating on certain things, it is actually considered bad. Because it, it, it actually hurts, you know, with these chances. So here we have Rage and Mercy. Now this book actually has, oh. Wow. I hit read more. But it has two titles because it has the same character. It's Rage and Mercy or it's, The Good Grape. Uh, like, I already did this, but I want to go ahead and redo it because the first episode was not that good. And I had to stop. Let me start by reading the synopsis. Now, the guy, I do not believe is black, so he's, he's writing this story. And you can see the black hand and the white woman hand, so that makes it obvious. And even though it has nine ratings, you get the type of people who actually buy this book and stuff like that. But going to synopsis, Sawyer didn't expect his life to go any further than whatever his wealthy clients told him to drive to until his work, until he worked for Diana Westcherry. The young, beautiful, epileptic woman stubbornly imposed her kindness on Sawyer, exposing a life that could have been. Yeah. If she had been his mother, yeah. Through Diana, Sawyer learns that nothing determines a man's life more than the mother he was born from. Not, not 100% true with his community effort, but okay, let's go with it. And when drug fiends murder her for her purse change, Sawyer will slaughter them all to immor well, immortalize her. I couldn't say the words for no reason. The mother was the mother he was denied. But knowing now that the greatest gift a father could give his child is choosing the mother of his child, 
He abducts Amanda to create the child that he was supposed to be. What? The Good Grape, because of censorship, is a story about Amanda and Sawyer. Amanda is a born again Christian on a mission to shepherd lost souls to God. Sawyer is her black kidnapper. This is, this is obviously racist. Determined to give his future child the white Christian mother he never had. While there is nothing Sawyer wouldn't do for his future child, Amanda must discover if she can endure possible horrors that prove that no child is no child of God is beyond redemption. What the heck? So if you don't understand by the propaganda by now, it is always seen as whenever a black man and a white woman get together, it is toxic, bad, difficult, things of that nature. And I'm going to react to other propaganda because when it comes to the swirling side, it is in children's TV shows. And it's prominent that they make it seem like it's natural, it's good. Whereas here, this person I don't even believe is black is talking about, is talking about a relationship that he couldn't understand. And this, this is horrible. And the other title is Rage and Mercy because it has the same uh, character, but it's ugly. But this is how they view black men. This is how they view black men dating out. And this is what they try to make it seem as. However, if you notice and pay attention, this is oftentimes the rhetoric as well as the attitude that a lot of black women have from dating out. Because they're convinced that if they make a lot of light-skinned children, that they'll be in a better situation. I mean, when you go shopping and you see a dark-skinned woman, how light is the child that's in a basket with her? And how often times is the baby lighter than her? And I'm not talking about babies because they they get darker over time. I'm talking about children. Now this is them flipping the script on something again, propaganda-wise, to make it seem like any relationship with a black man and a white woman is bad. But it's right underneath our noses. But this is how much they've been doing it. They've been doing it for so long. Now this is 2017 and I wanted to hit this up because it was very recent. But again, this is something that honestly a black woman would do. Not the whole raping thing, but offering raping thing, but offering herself up to have light skinned children because she doesn't like herself. Now don't get me wrong, uh, there are plenty of cases. Like I stated my reason, and I've talked to other dudes and we've agreed that the bigger issue is that Black women will challenge us more or less than allow us to lead, and therefore it affects our male frame. And the other issue is that, well, the last two generations, black women have been in charge of the rhetoric. They try to detract from that so much when it comes to this conversation. But when they date out, they kind of, they tell themselves. And here's what I mean by telling themselves. They tell themselves because at the end of the day, a lot of the white men that they like and a lot of the men that they like are in households where the women did what they were supposed to do and didn't challenge the men. And they like the results, but they're not willing to put in the work. This is why I'm saying like, yeah, give it some time. These same modern women, when they get used to these men, they'll turn around and do the same thing because they couldn't even respect their own black men without certain conditions being uh, met. Oh, if you're tall enough, or you have this, that, and that. If you have a certain amount of money, then I have the capacity to respect you. No, you don't. It's never long-standing respect because you gave a woman who didn't deserve uh, more than what she deserved. And that's the thing. We live in reality, not a fantasy. And it's nice to get something impractical every now and then, but to sustain something impractical is why a lot of the black community is in trouble. Because in a lot of cases, if the black women dated out and got a guy who was out of out of their league and accepted it, and we accepted repercussions as a culture, then it wouldn't be a problem. It really wouldn't. Because think about it. The black woman wants this hypergamy, this any other cool, great. However, they turn around and they complain about cheating. They complain about him having more options. They complain about the man being lazy. 
Well, if you want to go the lion route, where there's one, only one decent man who's low, who's good for mating, and many multiple women, then that makes sense. But they don't. They put the accountability back on the black man, and it's ugly. And I should react to a lion video. I should react to that. I'm gonna react to a lion video where it kind of shows it in general, because there are a lot of parallels. We shouldn't be comparing ourselves to lions. We really shouldn't. But I think it's because a lot of men and women like the mating culture of lions. But at the end of the day, it doesn't work and it doesn't hold up. But for this, you know, it, 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 it's right there. It shows. This idea that, you know, black men are bad and this and the other. It comes both Efren and Afern in the community, whereas it comes from black women and it comes from people who don't want black men to compete healthily on an open market. And even if you do overcome those struggles, oftentimes you don't have support. Most of black women, they, have, they have support. Like, and, and it's crazy. But yeah, this is what I mean by propaganda. Uh, I'm gonna keep this one short. There's no comments to react to, so I'm gonna just go ahead and end it. This has been all of you. I'm gonna do a different brew, uh, and I have to talk to you about the type of propaganda that they put out against black men and white women relationships. Gang with no name, I'll, I'll talk to you later.